I stood in a muddy courtyard on a cold spring, early spring morning, looking at a medieval castle in southern Colorado. Who would build a castle here on the front range of the Rocky Mountains? And why? I asked those same two questions when I first saw the castle in 1998. When I looked at such a monumental structure as it was then, I just assumed that this was a work of probably some eccentric millionaire who had the uh, resources probably hired an architect to draw the, the uh, plans, hired a contractor uh, and the equipment to do all the necessary construction with cranes and all that kind of things. At least that's how I would think you'd go back building a, a castle. It never dawned on me when I first saw it that this was the work of a single man. Jim Bishop. To understand Bishop's Castle, you need to go back to the year 1969. Jim was a fairly sickly boy. He had a, a problem, physical problems early on in elementary school, but by the time he got to high school, uh, he was rebellious. At one point, a teacher told him that he would never amount to anything, and so Jim dropped out of school, 15 years old. He took $450 that he had saved from throwing newspapers and, and um, mowing lawns, got his father to sign the papers because he was not of age, bought two and a half acres of land adjacent to the San Isabel National Forest which is where the castle stands today, and he started building. Now, he intended to build a cottage, uh, but as he was putting the, the rock in place, somebody, people would drop by and somebody would say, uh, hmm, it looks like a castle. And after he'd heard that a few times, he said, why not? And that's where it started. Jim has done all the work himself. He has hauled in the rock, he has mixed the mortar, he has placed it, he has forged the ironwork. Um, all of this he has done without any help and at all except an old truck that has a system of pulleys. And he has done everything by himself, paid for it. He is a, uh, I think his paying job is that of an iron worker in uh, Pueblo. The castle is as impressive to me as anything I've ever seen pictured from the old world. Flying buttresses on either corner support the, uh, the towers. Railings from the outside, you can, you can climb the castle from inside, from a spiral staircase, or from the outside. And the column now, as I saw it just a month or so ago, is now 160 feet high, 16 stories, and it is still under construction. Jim is now 62 years old and still going strong. I visited the castle several times over the years. Once I went with my son, we had an opportunity to, to meet Jim. I would say that we talked with him, except we didn't. We really listened to him. It doesn't take long to realize that he's quite a rugged individual, quite willing to talk about his work and the government. 
he is hostile toward government in any form and is quite vocal about it. After we listened to a, what I can, would call a tirade for a while we left and on our way home my son said, Dad, that man's crazy. Well, I, don't think he's, I don't think he's crazy. He's a mountain man in many respects. He's obviously very hostile toward the government. But I don't think he's going to shoot anybody. He just wants to be left alone to pursue his vision. And you know, I don't see myself palling around with Jim Bishop. But I respect that. The castle is impressive. The tower, the dragon's head, oh, with the dragon's head. If you look very closely at the, at the dragon, you'll see the scales and they look like, if you can imagine it, they look like almost like hospital warming trays. Well, that's exactly what they are. Sometime back, when uh, the hospital was getting rid of a whole bunch of the, uh, those trays, the person who was taking them to the dump decided to bring them to Jim instead, and Jim has used them to fashion the scales of the dragon's head. He's now got it rigged up. I'm told, so that it will shoot flames 30 feet out into the air. I, it, it's something to behold. I see the castle, in many respects, as a metaphor for life. People approach life in different ways. Some people need a blueprint. They need to know where they're going and chart out their course. Other people are content to, to improvise. Some people have a more grandiose or elaborate vision of what they want their life to be than other people do. But regardless of how we approach life, whether we build the, the plans first, or, or improvise. Regardless of that, we can profit by the hard work and the determination exhibited by Jim Bishop in building his castle, in pursuing his vision. Henry David Thoreau once said, if you have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That's where they belong. Now put foundations under them. That's what Jim is doing, putting a foundation on his vision. Now, I have no aspiration of building a castle, uh, anything on the scale of what he has done. But I do understand that if I want to live my life with meaning and purpose, it takes hard work and determination. And that's the lesson that I draw from Bishop's Castle. You can Google bishopscastle.org and get more information and see more pictures about the castle. Or you can travel I-25, about 25 miles south of Pueblo, you can take exit 74 west on 165 and drive slowly through Rye, Colorado because it's a speed trap. And then about 25 miles or so, look to your left. As you see a sign on your right that says Bishop's Castle, look to your left and you'll see a dragon's head peeking out from the trees and you'll be there. It's a trip worth taking, physically, if you can. But if not, 
I'd like for you to reflect on the story and of what it means for your life, wherever you are and whatever your goals are. I think it's a great story and I thank you for listening.